Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to part 7 in our Lakeside Slot Car Track Build Project. An exciting day. We're going to do some paint and then we're going to do some braiding. Well, we have a lot to do on this episode here. Painting the track and also putting the braid down in those dados to provide electricity for the slot cars. We'll be using this braid, which I got from Slot Car Corner, and good old weld wood contact cement. But first, we've got to cover up all that wood with some coats of paint, so let's get started. Because the track is indoors now, I don't really want to do a two-part epoxy paint, something really smelly like that. So I'm going to go with a gloss indoor-outdoor enamel and had uh, them mix up a couple of quarts for me. And I think the color is called Stone Mason Gray. And I had them do that at Lowe's. So let's grab a brush and get busy. Well, the first coat's dry, so I'm going to patch a couple of spots and then go over everything with 220 grit sandpaper. I don't know what it's going to look like on the camera but it is definitely gray and it's a high gloss although it's not a mirror finish by any means i used a super fine roller to get a really tiny orange peel finish on it as good as you can get probably without doing a spray and on the last coat i tried not to use the brush to put a lot of brush marks in it now you tend to obsess over something when you're painting it but a slot card track like this in reality this is going to get all gummed up it's going to be streaked and it's going to have black rubber marks and little tire juice and everything all over it. So really the most important thing is to get a good bond with the paint. So I tried to sand it after every coat, wait for it to dry, read the directions on the can because they're chemists, they know what they're doing. And so as soon as this dries, we're going to be ready to put some braid down. Woohoo, that's pretty exciting. But first, let's head back out to the shop. Well, here we are. We need another jig. We had to fabricate this from some scraps, and hopefully my buddy Dave is coming over tomorrow, and we're going to do some braiding. That's going to be awesome, nerve-wracking, because we're going to be using contact cement. But let me show you quickly this jig that I put together. Everything here is from what I had laying around in the garage. So I cut off a piece of our famous MDF, and I had a couple of two by three sticks left over and I found a little dowel I think it was a half inch maybe a little bit bigger but anyway no it's a little bigger than half inch I think but anyway so grabbed one a bucket and you don't want to be too precise with this actually because you really don't want this thing spinning like a top you need to have some good resistance on it so I screwed these verticals in from the bottom on the MDF and I screwed one 
of the 2x3s at the top of the bucket and one in there on the bottom and drill some holes and that wood rod goes all the way through and it's not perfectly straight it binds up a little bit and that's exactly what I was looking for like I said this is not supposed to be a Rolex watch I want it to turn when I ask it to but I don't want it to keep turning and I don't want it to pull so what we're gonna do theoretically remember we have to put some contact cement on this long length of braid we have to put contact cement on it and then we have to dispense that braid down onto the track that will have contact cement on that so the theory is I'm going to probably cut a slit in this plastic somewhere I'm gonna feed a little bit of braid in and then we're gonna roll the braid on here and spiral it on and I'll be able to put the contact cement on the braid and it will hold it that way and after the contact cement has set up then this will also dispense the braid as we go laying it on the track. So we're going to find out how well this works or doesn't work tomorrow. We'll do one small portion and see what happens. But anyway, just nothing like a homemade jig. I decided to do a test since this is my first time laying braid like this. So you can see I took a section of braid, it comes on a spool, and I cut it for the length, adding a little bit extra. And as soon as I laid that braid down on the track, it flipped up on edge and wanted to find its way down into the slot. So <laughs> clearly that's not a technique that's going to work for me, just having the braid lay on the track and then push it into position. So I'm glad I took the time to do this jig. So I cut a slit here, the braid is down, and I have a small little clamp on the inside just holding it so it can't get out of control and I wrap the braid as you can see and my plan is to get it started and then my friend Dave's coming over he's gonna kinda roll this and I'm going to paint the contact cement on the braid as we put it up on the roller here and then we'll dispense it the same way and that's the plan so we'll paint the braid with contact cement and I'll paint one of the grooves with contact cement and let's see how this works out. Well we're at a stopping point so in the interest of fairness we went ahead and braided the inside lane on the south half of the track so we're one-sixth of the way done and we didn't film any of the process because this was the first time through and we just did not need the distraction of the camera. As it turns out, my friend Dave brought his tool for pressing that and boy, this is just a wonderful tool. So I recommend something like this to help press that braid in the slot. And let's check our depth. Ooh. All right, I'm shooting for about 25 thousandths. That came out to be 24 thousandths. That's not bad. And that's from the top of the braid to the top of the deck. That's a difficult measurement on a piece of wood. That is, and a piece of braid. So let me open the lens just a little bit here. You can see I started adding just a little bit of color. I can't do much more right now. I have to wait for these panels to be joined together. So what we're going to do now, let me zoom over here and you can see all the tools. There's our roller and the braid and such. Okay, so now we'll take you through. Now that we've done one lane, we'll show you the process. <laughs> we promised to show you the process, so here it goes. So I've got the raw braid strapped around my neck. We measured it for the length for one of the lanes and now we're going to put it on the roller and I'm going to put glue on it at the same time. And I have the real luxury of having my friend Dave here to kind of help out with this. Really really helps. 
This is what we're using, old school contact cement. Put it on both pieces, let it tack up, and then push them together. I'm going to feed the braid through the little slit that I made in the tub here. And I have a little clamp that pinches it on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub the glue on this and Dave's going to gently roll that barrel and between the two of us we're going to get this barbershop pole wrapped on this tub. I'm just using a little uh, flux brush. Okay, see how that goes and we'll wrap it on there. So we'll meet up again in a few minutes. If by chance you're looking for an activity that is both tedious and nerve-wracking, then I recommend applying contact cement to your parade. If you have a friend who's willing to help in a horribly monotonous task like this, then you're, you're gold. One of my hobbies is watching paint dry. All right, there's the braid. Now we got to go in and apply contact cement to the groove. Our contact cement has tacked up, so I'm going to start here, and Dave is going to manage the, the roller, and we're going to go in this direction.
All right, half done. Actually more than half because this part of the track has all the long continuous pieces of braid. So it was fantastic that Dave could be here to help me wrangle those long strips. So tomorrow I've got much shorter pieces of braid to work with. I'm going to start on the short sections and even the long braid on this end of the track is about half of what it was on the other end. So we really did the most difficult half today. All right, I'm working solo today. This is a short section of track. So you can see I've just got one piece of braid laid out and I put the contact cement on that and on the dado down in the groove. We're just going to go that far up to the dead strip. So let me zoom in and you can watch the piece of braid going down. Okay, rinse and repeat. Whew, there it is. That's the last of the braid. Right here is the dead strip, and we are done. Well, if you're this far into the series, you must be fairly curious about slot car tracks. And so, I wanted to give you an alternative. If you don't want to go the extra mile with this commercial track type braid, datoing and setting it into the MDF like that. Let me give you an alternative. And that is this. It is copper foil tape. And it's available. I'm sure you can get it online. I haven't ever purchased it online, but I'm sure you can. But stained glass people use this all the time. So it's a proven product. And this is one mil thick quarter inch and the little packet was like 10 years ago it was like nine bucks for 100 feet so very inexpensive but it has a little paper back on it and if you don't want to dado it in you are going to have to make your 1 8 inch slot so the car guides can travel but basically this is so easy you're just going to stick this copper tape down and you're going to burnish it a little bit be real gentle going around the corners. Don't stretch it too much. I used this on a track and it held up really well. I had students racing on it all week and it held up for years. And you can even repair it with a soldering iron. So here's an alternative. Yeah, it would last even longer if you set it down in a dado, but you don't have to. You will need that eighth inch slot, but this copper tape is an easy and inexpensive alternative to going with the braid like I'm building on the lakeside track. Well, I hope you can join me for part eight when we work on the electronics. See you then.